the heart and soul of shooting. Mm -hmm. Once we've got safety, which is absolutely something we cannot compromise, right. 100% of the time safety, the heart and soul is sights and triggers. Oh, okay. okay. That is the beating heart of everything we're gonna do. And it's bizarrely zen. Yeah. Everything else around you is moving and dynamic and there are a lot of parts and pieces and yeah. steps and all of that procedural stuff. But when it comes time to shooting, mm -hmm. we need to make sure we have our sights well understood and mm. our trigger also well understood. understood. Because it's the relationship of those two mm -hmm. that can either make or break your shot. Yeah. And that's where people started building weird habits like flinching and anticipating the shot and, and funky human things come into play. Yeah. Right? So before I have people go live fire, we, we really investigate the sights and the triggers so you understand what's going on here without the stress of ammo. Okay. Right? No ammo on the bench, nothing that's going to judge you. Because that's what ammo does. Is, of course, it's, it's awful. It just crushes yeah. your soul sometimes. Right. So we've got two... F series in front of us. We have it stock as it comes from the factory with the optics plate, which is this right here. Ah. And then we have one that has been updated to include a red dot. So you have red dots and then iron sights. So let's go old school first, which is as you would get a handgun straight from the manufacturer with iron sights. The iron sights, we have our rear sight, and our front sight. Mm -hmm. Now you've got one, two, three pillars. Okay. And our job is to put the square peg visually back in the hole or the notch that is created in the rear sight. Mm. Now the relationship of the front sight to the rear sight is what aligns the gun to the target properly with sight alignment. And you're gonna superimpose that image, which is your sight picture. The reason that's all kinds of complicated <laughs> is because you actually have three focal planes to choose from. Okay. You have the plane of the rear sight, the front surface of the front sight, and then the surface of the target itself. So which one do you look at? Mm. It's a visual yeah. thing. Like a weird conundrum. Like which one do you look at? Okay. And many times people do the dance of, do I look here? Do I look there? Do I? And you can watch their head change and shift as they're trying to figure out which one to give emphasis to. Yes. So what I need to be doing is to look through the notch of the rear sight, like it's a valley to find the mountain, which is the front sight, and assemble all three into a nice little row. I need to make sure the surfaces of the rear sight and the surface of the front sight are all even. Mm -hmm. So that's what I tell people to do first. Level the front sight even and then center it in that notch. So essentially you're looking at all three, just at different times? Kind of. Okay. Our goal is to begin the visual path here at the rear sight and then find the front sight. Okay. Now here's the, here's the issue. Okay. Your brain and your eye can only focus on one surface at a time. Right. So which surface do you choose? The surface of the front sight. Okay. Your rear sights will be a skosh blurry. Mm -hmm. The target will be a skosh blurry. Mm -hmm. But don't put a lot of distrust in that. That's natural, that's normal. Mm. Where people get the next question is, well, okay, but now I have double vision. If both eyes are open, which eyeball do I look through? Right. right. So here's the deal. You can find out which eyeball you care about the most. Look at our target. Okay. <laughs> right, we'll see which eyeball wins. We're going to establish eye dominance. Okay. okay. So go ahead and look at our target and you're going to make a small aperture, a small little opening in your hands. Okay. Both eyes open. You can see through that little hole. Mm -hmm. right? Now keep your eyes glued on that little hole mm -hmm. right? on the target. Stay focused on that target and bring your hands straight back to your face. You are right eye dominant. Wow. Isn't that nifty? I never knew that. That's an easy trick to find out which eye is more strong than oh, the other. Okay. Your body will naturally want to default to that side. Yes. So one trick for new shooters, because ultimately we want you to be two eyes open, is to establish eye dominance. And before you put the gun to the target, you look, you close the eye you want to close, and then you deliver the gun onto the target, which will put it directly in line with the eyeball that is your strongest eyeball. Yes. Okay? That will help eliminate a lot of visual confusion mm. and that focal plane shifting. Right. Preset that eye and then deliver the eye. And then deliver the eye. Mm -hmm. Got it. Exactly. A lot of people feel like uh, compelled to close one eye, though, a lot of times when they're shooting. Yes. But I guess that's, they don't know to, to deliver the other eye once they've locked it on that target. Mm -hmm. ah, exactly. Okay. So, you know, life hack. Close life the hack. eyeball you want to close before 
you yes. put the gun on the target. Yes. Now that's a beginner's place to start. Okay. Right? Again, so that you learn sight alignment. You learn how to bring the gun up, put the sights in line on the target choice. Ultimately, we want you to be able to shoot with both eyes open. Yeah. And there are techniques to teaching you how to do that on iron sights that are very successful. Mm -hmm. But a faster way to get there is with a red dot, mm -hmm. which is this optic right here. Okay. So it's not a laser, you're not projecting a dot, yeah. but you're going to be looking at the target. You're going to be looking through the window, or as many people I'll explain as like, you're looking through the TV screen. Ah. And you watch TV with both eyes open. Yes. So when I look through the TV screen, I can keep both eyes open and I see the dot. Mm -hmm. Now, instead of having one, two, three surfaces to look at, I'm simply looking at the target. I can remain target focused with mm -hmm. both eyes open. Mm -hmm. It's a lot less visually demanding on the shooter. Oh, okay. Now everyone has preferences and there are learning curves with both, but there are pros and cons to both. Okay. This is a great way to get folks target focused, quick sight acquisition. So there's a lot of pros to having a red dot. Yeah. Next thing we need to look at are the triggers themselves. Okay. Okay. So when we take a look at the trigger, it, it's adorable. Yeah. And obviously we don't want to hang out with it until it's appropriate. Okay. So for me to do this next exercise with you, we're going to pick the firearm up as though we were going to load and make ready. And we're going to do a visual physical inspection to confirm Clear. No magazine in the gun. No magazine in the gun. Excellent. And now we can either rack it or use the slide release to send the slide forward. Now I'm going to have you go palm up. Okay. With a keeping our trigger finger straight, I just want you to look at what's going on on the trigger itself. So you have the trigger and then you have the trigger blade. Oh, that's that little like a tongue. thing sticking out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And that trigger blade is very important because you can see if I were to touch it and wiggle it, you can see that little bar in the back is starting to move all the way back here. Ah. And that prevents the trigger from completing if I do not have full front face surface contact with the trigger. It's a safety feature. Ooh, of the okay. trigger itself. So that's the first thing to note. Not all triggers have that, but if you notice that on your firearm, that's what it's doing. Got okay. you. So now we're going to look at how the trigger functions. So first things first, keeping our muzzles pointed towards our target, we're yes. going to just move our trigger finger to find. That's it. And you're going to compress that tongue, find the front flat surface of the trigger. Perfect. Once you're in that spot, now we're going to gently compress until you feel the trigger kind of push back against you. Mm -hmm. And that's eliminating the take up or the slack. Mm. So technically the trigger isn't ready to do work until you have found that point of resistance. Okay. Right. Some folks call it the wall or the break point okay. in the trigger. So right up until then is essentially dead air. So gotcha. you're not really in a point where you can shoot until you find that spot. Yeah. That point and of you resistance. can see Exactly. And you can see how much travel there is. Some have more, some have less, right? Makes and models. Yeah. Now when you're at that wall and that point, I want you to compress. You're not pulling, you're not pushing, you're compressing the trigger until it ultimately goes click. Isn't that nice, gentle and mm. peaceful? It's kind of strange. Yeah. Right? Now take your finger <laughs> off the trigger, straighten yeah. the gun out. Okay. Reach over the top and we're going to rack it. Okay. Now we both have targets in front of us. Yep. So I'm going to have you go ahead and aim in. Now you're using the red dots, so keep both eyes open and point. Good. Now you have your dot yep. on the spot. Yep. Now find the trigger. Just move to find that front flat surface. Once you've found it, compress it back gently till you find that resistance point. Yep. Now I want you to take a deep breath in at the belly. As you exhale, your laser beam focus on that dot and you're gently compressing the trigger. You do not care when. See how stable the gun was? Yeah. Gorgeous. Straight finger. Return straight back to you to compressed. Ready? Your non-firing hand at this point, I'll mirror you, is going to relax and release. You're going to come body side and over so that we don't flag our fingers in front of the muzzle mm -hmm. and rack it. This will reset the trigger body side and up to complete your grip for the next dry fire press. So look where you want to go. Think of the tip of your trigger finger pointing to the target and present. Find your sight, find your trigger, get to that break point. Beautiful sights, inhale, 
Perfect the sights, exhale, compress. Nice, straight finger. Straight finger. Return to you. Yeah, I saw the dot the whole time. That Isn't time. that nice? Yeah. It's bizarrely meditative. It is. And that meditative process is what's going to center you for the shooting aspect mm. of the journey. Mm. Many times it's the sound, the explosion, the ball of fire, all of that stuff, the concussive nature of shooting right. that can make people flinch and get intimidated and right. nervous. Right. So this dry fire exercise of learning your sights yes. and marrying the experience of the sights up with the experience of the trigger Triggers. just brings everything together yeah. in a calm harmony. Yeah. And that's what we want. I like that. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. So now to put the gun down. Okay. We're going to go back to that indexed position, prep that thumb below the slide release, mm -hmm. elbow high, straight wrist, and lock the slide back, roll and bench. Very nice. Okay. So sights and triggers, and that is a dry fire exercise you really can't get enough of. The more it. you practice that element, the more successful you're going to be at the range with whatever ammo you have to work with.